In this video, I'll cover everything you need to know to build your own DIY generator quiet box. I'll take you step by step, including a list of all the parts that I use in this video in the description section below. I'll also show you some of the mistakes that I made, some of the issues that I ran into with heat and how I resolved them. So let's start off with a discussion about sound. As you can see here, we've got about 42 decibels when it's quiet in my backyard. At this point, I'm now talking out loud about 12 feet away, and now we're running the generator with the box open. And then you can see here with the generator box fully closed, we're running at about 60. Regarding the box, I just picked up a shed at a local hardware store that you can put typical garden tools in. You can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's. Then I went down to Tractor Supply and picked up some horse stall mats. The one I wanted wasn't available, so I had to get two smaller ones. And as you can see, one of them by themselves fits pretty well. And there was a space that I still had. So taking a quick measurement, I was able to determine how much I need to cut off on the mat to fit into this space. And it fits like a glove. As you can see, there's a little space in the back, but we'll address that momentarily. Now, as far as making cuts goes, what I want to do is measure out on both sides the items that I'm going to be putting on the side. And the first item is a air intake, just a basic attic vent that I was able to pick up at Home Depot. I started off by making a few small holes with my drill, and then I was able to get my reciprocating saw in to make the bigger cuts. Just make sure you stay inside of the line that you outline whenever you're measuring out your object that you'll be putting in, in this particular case, a vent. Next, I added some fire block foam, and then once it's settled, and then I slowly pushed in my vent. Next, I drilled some holes so we could put in our bolts. I used some galvanized metal here because it will be exposed to the elements. I also picked up a few washers and a few small bolts. Went ahead and went on the other side, and as you can see, I just attached the bolts and the washers and I was able to securely tighten this down. Next, I picked up some Dynaflex sealant as we're gonna be exposed to the weather, obviously, and I just wanna make sure we don't get rain or water inside uh, of our box. Now, as far as the next item that we're gonna cut on the other side, I've got a blast gate, and this will be used to run out our power cord, and also our hose to our gas propane tank, and I just wanna keep everything outside, especially the propane tank. So I went ahead and again, cut a hole with my drill so that I can get my reciprocating saw in here. As you can see, again, I just took the approach of cutting on the inside of the red line, trying to avoid going on the outside. Now, the issue that I ran into very quickly is once I put this in, I noticed on the outside, I've got a big caping hole where water and other things can get in. So what I did is I picked up some galvanized sheet metal and measuring off uh, about three inches, I was able to, again, cut this Make sure that you wear gloves during this process because this can be razor thin on the sides. Now I went ahead and slid it into the hole to get an idea of how much I'm going to be working with. And then I began to cut small incisions about inch, inch and a half, every three or four inches going around. And what I want to do is kind of spread the metal out to, again, create um, a barrier so that I don't get rain and other stuff inside of the box. So now that I've made the small incisions, I just went ahead and begin to bend each one of these tabs back. And as you can see in just a second, what we're trying to do is just splay it out in a way that I can then screw it on to the sides so that it will be firmly attached. So now that I made the cuts, I was able to line this up and put it inside. One of the things I did notice is that the metal is pretty rounded on the edges. So I went ahead and put it in my clamp to tighten down and really um, get those edges nice and closed off so I don't have the round edging around each one of the tabs. Now I went ahead and slid it back into the hole inside the blast gate or rather between the blast gate and the wall and then I just screwed it down with some uh, simple screws. Now on the other side of the blast gate I went ahead and wanted to mount this to, so it's securely up against the wall and I just found these small tabs at Home Depot and just making some very small holes, I was able to do some pre-drilling and then drop in the different screws all the way around. It doesn't look perfect, but it's good enough for our purposes of keeping it securely in place. So now it slides up and down perfectly, allowing us to run our hose to our propane tank and our cord that we're gonna run out to our electrical outlet. Next, I went ahead and made the measurements for our fan that we're gonna be sticking in. If I made one mistake in this process, it was that the fan that I got was a little small. If I were to do this again, and I might go back later and just add in a larger fan, but I just got an attic fan from Home Depot. These are designed to handle the heat. 
Now I went ahead again and put the fire block foam in here. And as you can see, the exhaust fan, it goes on the outside. Originally when I was playing around with it, I accidentally put it on the inside, but it mounts perfectly on the outside. And again, this will draw the hot air through our box to pull that air out from the intake on the other side. And I purposely put this uh, fan at the top of the box. As the heat rises, I wanted to capture that hot air and I put the intake on the left side, I put that at the bottom. So once I mounted this up, I again went ahead and put the silicon around the edges of all of the things that we cut holes in on the side. As you can see, I'm doing this on the exhaust where the exhaust pipe comes out, which we'll talk about momentarily. The next thing that we have to really factor in is our insulation because a generator running inside of this box can get pretty hot, uh, sometimes up to over a couple of hundred degrees. So we wanna make sure that whatever we put in here can handle this without melting or having any heat issues. On several videos I saw online, people are using RMAX. This melts at 250 degrees. And I read the comments of one of the videos that was the most popular on this particular setup. People po posted that they actually had theirs melt and almost catch on fire. So this is why I use Rockwool Comfort Board. It's actually rated for 2,150 degrees. There's videos online of people putting torches to it and it's perfectly fine. So. I spent a little extra money and I was able to find one at a local Lowe's and I got some screws, again, washers. I think the screws were about two and a half inches and I went ahead and drilled those in. Now the rock wool is about an inch, inch and a half thick. So you have to make sure that whatever the screw is, it will both go through that and also mount into the plastic. Since rock wool is easy to work with, you can easily cut it, draw the lines where you want to cut it with a knife. And then again, using the different screws and washers just mounted on. Some places were a little trickier, as you can see here. I had to measure everything perfectly, draw down on paper where I was going to make the measurements. And then I had to go over to the Rockwool Comfort Board and make those same measurements to cut exactly so I knew where to mount this. So now that I've made the cuts, I was able to line it up on the wall. And as you can see, everything fit perfectly snug and where I'd made the measurements. I did the same on the other side, just finishing everything off and I also added it to the doors. Now it does add weight to the doors, so whenever I open them, I try to support them the best I can. Lastly, I went ahead and mounted this on the inside of the top of the shed. As you can imagine, as heat rises, this area specifically is gonna be impacted, so you wanna make sure that you mount that up on the top of the inside. Next, what we'll do is we'll talk about the exhaust pipe. What I did is I made a mistake of buying this metal flange. I saw someone did it on a video and they ran their metal exhaust hose through this from their muffler, as you can see here. We're gonna run our exhaust out. But the problem is that heat transferred so quickly to that metal flange and heated up the side. Now, as you can see here, I'm wrapping this up with a fiberglass material that's designed to wrap around the exhaust systems of motorcycles and other you know, vehicles. It does an okay job of keeping the heat from being too much, uh, but be careful when you're working with this material, make sure you wear uh, gloves, long sleeve shirts, and a mask because of all the fiberglass. Next, I got the muffler and tailpipe sealer, and I put this on a connector, put the glue here on the inside, and this is designed to connect the muffler to the exhaust hose. As you can see here, I'm sliding it onto our exhaust hose, and We'll bolt it down in a minute, but as you can see, I'm sliding it in to connect with the muffler exhaust. Now, next I have these brackets, and I'm gonna mount these on the wooden fence, and it really helped to prevent transferring the heat from our exhaust hose over to the wooden fence. There was a negligible amount of heat, and I might go back later and put some material behind it to prevent any heat transfer, especially on wood. The brackets helped hold the exhaust hose off of that wood pretty well. Again, make sure you're careful when you're working with the fiberglass to wear gloves and a mask. I found myself itching for several days after working with this material. Now, as you can see, when we're running this, we get up to about 180 degrees or so on this um, exhaust hose coming out. It wasn't too bad. Now, a second ago, I mentioned that I had problems with that metal flange transferring the heat. So I went back and I ended up pulling it out because it was just transferring way too much heat. I bought this three inch dryer vent at Home Depot. Another video, someone had done it this way and I loved it. I ended up putting that in and I went down and bought some springs at Home Depot and I shoved these in underneath that exhaust hose coming off. And it, was, it did a perfect job of keeping that hose centered where the heat didn't really transfer over to that dryer vent. 
using our temperature gauge here, I saw the hose was running about 300 degrees, 290 uh, right there when it comes out. But on that dryer vent, it was only around 90 degrees, barely transferred the heat. Now next, I put a small block up here on my fence. And what I did was I hung a motorcycle muffler up here. I specifically chose this muffler after looking online and the engine type and everything just kind of lined up well enough with this muffler that we didn't get a lot of pushback on the engine from the exhaust. And again, this was designed for about a 400 cc motorcycle and it was able to help drop the noise significantly. When I ran this, it got up to about 140 degrees, give or take. Now, one other issue is on our air intake in the exhaust, of course, noise is gonna escape. So what I did is I built boxes. I did a lot of measurements first and I really wrote down all of the measurements in advance and use that information to cut out with the a piece of old plywood that I had to cut out the pieces to make these boxes, which I'll take you through the process. After I cut them, I just sanded them down because plywood can get a little you know, splinter on the edges. Using wood glue, I was able to just glue everything together at first to hold the frame in place. And as you can see in a minute, I then went ahead and nailed it down once the glue had set. Also on the end, because the plywood was, was so thin, I just used a staple gun. Next, I drilled small holes on the side because I wanted to run bolts through, again, to hold the insulation on the inside. Just punching that bolt through, put the washer on, and then I screwed on these bolts. I got a couple of hooks at Home Depot and I just measured on the side of the box the same height and just mounted these on. I did this to hold up the exhaust box here. And again, as you can see, looking inside, there's a small opening at the bottom. As the sound comes out, it has to take a 90 degree turn and then another 90 to get out. And of course, this helps reduce the sound. And as you can see, the exhaust coming out was about 150 degrees. This is a process of setting this up. It takes me about four minutes pulling everything out. As you notice, I pulled the tank, the propane tank out. I do not leave that inside while operating this because if it overheats or whatever reason catches on fire, I don't want that tank inside. And again, that's why I put the tank on the outside running the hose through the blast gate. And that's it. That's our generator shed. If you have any questions, feel free to post it below. As always, stay safe out there.